Hello and good morning. No net of nine, no net action, and I bring a ministry video. The format for this video is going to be somewhat different than what I usually do. I'm going to be making a series of videos introducing. Well, this video is going to be introducing the processor and some logic, and then later ones will be being more in depth to the logic. Any terms that we run into, I will talk about them as we meet them. Now, this does also work in multiplayer. However, they seem to have their own way of doing things, and I think it is best to follow how the community does for multiplayer. However, I see no reason for this to not work in campaign with a group of people. And as such, let's get to it. Ministry has three logic blocks which determine how the logic plays out. We've got the smallest, which is the microprocessor, then the logic processor, and then the hyperprocessor. Each one of them has a different radius, which is for determining block linking. And they also have different speeds at which they do their commands, with the microprocessor being the slowest and the hyperprocessor being the fastest. That's pretty much all you need to know, and most of the time, the microprocessor is generally fine. You only need to go higher, depending on how more how more complex your objective is. But for now, we will be only focusing on the microprocessor. Now, how they work? Let's go ahead and get just just some random stuff in here. This game reads it from top to bottom, line by line. So when the game reads the first line, it'll read it, then do it. The next line, it'll read it, then do the command. And then next line, reads it, does it, and then the last line. Same thing for pretty much all the time, unless you change the flow. When it reaches the bottom, it'll go all the way back up. If you add a jump, as long as the condition is true, which in this case, this is always, you can have it jump to a place. And in this case, it'll skip this line and read this line. Then loops back up and then pretty much does the same thing. That is just simple introduction of how the processor does its stuff. So for our goal for this video, it's going to be controlling the monos. By default, monos mine copper and lead based on what's in the core. They, however, can also mine sand and scrap. To start things off, we are going to want to connect to the unit we want to control. So there's monos right there. We're going to use the command unit bind. You can choose it through here or you can type in at mono. Each one works. That alone does not do anything. They're just doing their own business over there. So we're going to want to give them a command. So unit control. We're going to use approach. Now I'm going to use at this. That is asking the processor its location or its information. We're going to want its location. So at this X and at this Y. This means it's asking the processor to give the X and Y coordinates of where it is. And we'll choose radius of six. Now, and they've moved. However, that's not really gonna do anything for us. We want them to mine. So we want to change a few things. We want to first locate. Locate can be used to find things as such we are going to find ore we're going to want to find scrap and i like to rename the outputs to ore x and ore y now we replace this with ore x and ore y and as you can see they are moving to the ore that they have located which is here 
Now we need them to mine. So we're going to add another control, this time the mine command. And using the same location, they will now mine. However, they've already got their inventory full of an item, so they cannot mine. We need to fix that. We need to add a sail, uh, fail safe for that. So, we're going to need to add a few sensors. We want the sensors to happen after it binds the unit so it can get the information. We'll be using at unit so the unit that it is currently connected to it gets the information. We're going to look for its capacity, how much items it can hold, and we are going to select item capacity. For the next one, we want to see how much items it is currently holding. So held total in unit and total items. Last sensor, we are going to check what is in its inventory specifically. So held item in the unit and uh, first item. So if we would just hit back, so that way the changes happen, and go into the variables, we can see that the held item is lead. We need it to be scrap. So we need to do multiple things. First is a jump. We need to make it if held item is not scrap. Another thing. We also only want that to trigger. And eh, let's put an end here as well. We only want it to trigger if held total is greater than or equal to one. Let's change the list to equals. If it is scrap, continue to mine it. Now we are going to add, because on the, this alone is not going to do anything. It's still, they're just still going to be over there. In fact, they're actually not going to do much right now. We need to fix that. Okay, so next is adding them to be able to deposit into the core. So we are going to need to locate our home. So building core. We do not want the enemy's core. So make that false. And I like to rename it to core X and core Y. And for building, you get to name the building. So for home, that's what I go with. Next, we want to approach or move. So for X, for Y, it is a six. Now, if done correctly, because it is not scrap in their inventory, it should do the next thing. So it'll read this line, this, 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 now it'll do this line since the item is greater than one or greater than equal to one it'll jump now it'll check does the item it have equal scrap since it's not it'll continue to go down the line now they're coming home good start now we need them to deposit so Another control, item drop to core home is what we named it. And drop the amount that it can hold. So hold cap. If done properly, they dropped it. They're moving. And they're mining. Almost done. Next thing is, once the inventory is full, they won't do anything anymore. So we need to add one more condition. So another jump. Uh, put it right here. We want it to trigger before the held total or this line. So if held total is equal to held cap. So if what it's holding is maxed out, we want it to jump to deposit. And now they come. Okay. 
And that is really the very basic of controlling a unit. Now, you definitely don't want to control all at once. You might want to have more precise controlling. But as a start, this is pretty much perfect. Now, they do have some interesting things. Let's see, let's make this sand. And obviously we need to change this to at sand as well. If they're mining close to the core, they will ignore some of the commands and just instantly deposit into the core. I don't know what the radius is, but that is just how they do it. But other than that, that is the introduction to processors. Next video that I'm thinking of is probably more precise controlling of units. So I will show off how do you only bind to a single unit and show off a few things you can do with that. Probably more mining, maybe I'll do other stuff. But that is the introduction to the processor and just some mining. You can go ahead and try it yourself and see if you can make them just mine specific things. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you another time. Later.